Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha Hawaii, I'm Wendy Lowe and I'm your new friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. We are located in the Pioneer Plaza right in the heart of downtown. Today our topic of discussion will be on fascia, the missing link to the majority of unexplained aches, pains and ailments. Fascia can be your best friend or it can be your biggest nightmare. Today, my guest is Anthony Crisco. He is a founding member of the Fascia Research Society and the inventor of the Fascinator roller. So not to be confused with the Fascinator, the hat that the Brits use, especially on that beautiful wedding that we just experienced, and the fascination method of self-myofacial release. Anthony, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me on Health Tech, Wendy. Yes, very good. So Anthony, you and your wife Eileen are the founding members of the Fascia Research Society. Oh, what a mouthful. And you both have shift, shifted your careers, which was very successful, 20 years of doing all kinds of great things on fascia and, is, and how it relates to health. Fascia must be exciting. What is fascia? That's a great question. <laughs> Fascia, what is it? <clears throat> I want you to imagine if you had an orange. Okay, if I peel the orange and I see all the insides of the orange with the sinewy, white, pulpy stuff, and all those, uh, it, those structures that aren't orange, well, guess what? Our bodies are made in a similar way. Fascia wraps all your bones, your ligaments, your tendons, your nerves, all 80 trillion cells in your body. It is the the connective tissue, but it, more importantly, it's the largest organ of the body. Classified in 2012 as the largest organ of the body by the Federative Committee of Anatomic Nomenclature, in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay. Now, I know we have a couple of slides that can right. show us what that orange looks like. Right. So if we look at the orange slide, uh, I want you to imagine you're peeling an orange. <laughs> you have the white stuff around it. And then you see what separates those wedges of oranges. What is that clear membrane that's keeping the orange slices in its wet? What is that membrane? Think about that as the fascia of the orange. Ah. And like the slide says here, it is the largest organ system in the body. Yes, larger than the skin. Many people say, but isn't, it, isn't the skin the largest organ of the body? Yeah, it was uh, before the year 2012. Mm -hmm. And that's again when fascia was classified as the largest organ in the body. Now, where is the fascia? Well, uh, I think the question should be, <laughs> where isn't the fascia? Because it's everywhere. It wraps all 45 miles of your nerves, all 60,000 miles of arteries, veins, and lymphatic vessels, wow. all 1,000 lymph nodes, all 640 muscles, and all of their individual muscle fibers, and all of their uh, different bundles of fibers that make up more and more pieces of this body. It wraps all 206 bones. It wraps all of your other organs. And yes, it wraps all 360 joints. And I might as well throw in there the 900 ligaments in our body as well. <laughs> so again, where is fascia? No, where isn't the fascia? Wow. That's the question. That is the question. You know, and honestly, Anthony, I thought the heart was the largest organ. And that shows you how much I know. And that's why we're having you here today, <laughs> so that you can explain to all of us what the heck is fascia. Because until I met you, I didn't know what that was. And, and I'm sure in the audience, there's a lot of people at present that still don't know what fascia is all about. That's a great question. And think about if I went to get a big steak mm -hmm. and I peel that steak apart, what is that shiny, silvery substance in between the red meat? Mm -hmm. That's the fascia. That's the stuff that gets stuck in your teeth, and we give it to our dog under the table, right? Because it doesn't, she doesn't chew very well. It doesn't go down. It's made of collagen and water. Right. Yeah. Wow. So fascia seems like it's a carrier of liquid throughout the body. And so uh, what you're trying to share with us is that if we block it, that means it causes a lot of these different issues. That's, That's why right. we need to love our fascia. That's right. Okay. So may, is it safe to assume that if I drank a lot of water or enough water, that my fascia is okay and healthy? Um, no, I would say that's not a good assumption. Just because you're giving your body the building blocks, but not giving it the stimulus to utilize those blocks. That's what's missing is the stimulus to take this fresh water mm -hmm. and to get it pumping through our lymphatic system. 
Now, there's some ideas about the how fascia functions with regards to water, and we can highlight those on the next slide. Uh, it's a very clearly laid out. If you think about your fascia as being simple type of material, a sponge. Uh, when you get older, Wendy, what mm -hmm. kind of sponge do you want to be? Dry and angry and bitter and bent out of shape? Or do you want to be moist and pliable and bubbly all the well, time? Well, I think I'm the first one, and I want to become the second one. That's right. Yeah, so that's why we're having you here. You're going to teach me how to become pliable, bendable, and more that's right. uh, healthier. And when we look at the properties of fascia mm -hmm. with regards to applying this stimulus that I just mentioned, let's take a look at that slide. When we look at the water, you want to understand your fascia from the very beginning, it has the capacity to hold four gallons of water in your body. Okay? If you're a little bit bigger, maybe there's more water. If you're more <laughs> petite, maybe there's less water. But on average, the science shows us the fascial organ system can hold about four gallons of water. Now, this water is also referred to as the lymphatic fluid that flows through our body. So let's break that down. How does this work? Well, when pressure is applied to the fascia, whether it's from stretching, rolling, shiatsu, massage, any type of physical body work, Old water is squeezed out. Now I want you to think about this old water as inflammatory waste. If I have a lot of inflammatory waste pooling in my body, am I gonna be free of motion or am I gonna have stiffness and aches and pains and inflammation and altered mechanics because everything on me is so tight, okay? When we apply that pressure, we squeeze out the old water. I take the pressure off, a higher percentage of fresh water starts flooding the tissue as if I took that dry sponge, if I dipped it in water, what is that dry wrinkled sponge going to do for me? It's going to expand and Great. open up and it's going to take all the restrictions off of my arteries, my veins, mm -hmm. my nerves, and other pain sensitive structures that are within this tissue all over my body. So. After we roll it, the next part is proper hydration and nutrition. Again, if, I, if this capacity is for four gallons of water mm -hmm. and I'm eating all this junk food, isn't my body trying to deal with this junk? Right. How do I flush it out? Right. No pun intended. <laughs> right? You need water to move the old stuff out. You need that water to help with the fluidity and the, the slipperiness of the tissue, if mm -hmm. you will. A great example of that, like another one, is if you bought a chicken, you open the package, you pull the skin from the muscle. What is that clear, slippery stuff mm -hmm. in between? That's the fluid that the fascial tissues make. And those fluids are what allow all your structures to glide amongst each other instead of, if there's a knot, it acts like glue. So if I put super glue on my forearm, stuck it to my other forearm, pretend these are individual muscles. I move this muscle, but because it's attached to that by this sticky glue, where do I feel pain? Mm. I feel pain here. I get it. So just because I hurt here, doesn't mean I'm hurt there. Right. The root cause is the stickiness of these fascial layers at various junctions throughout the body. And this is what we've developed. That's how we have been helping thousands of people over the last decade. Wow. Seems to me the topic of conversation right now is hydration. Hydration, hydration, hydration. And so basically you want to keep your body fluid. That's it. Okay, and so I have a trivia question for the audience out there. How many of you know how much water you're supposed to drink daily? Anthony? Well, there's a lot of information out there, yes. but we stick to a general rule of mm -hmm. half your body weight yes. in ounces. Yes. So if I'm 180 pounds, which I'm not. <laughs> and if I was 100 pounds, which I'm not. Then I should be drinking <laughs> 90 ounces. And 50 for me. But, so just take your weight, divide it by two, and in that, the amount of ounces is, is how much we should be required to have. Daily. Minimal. Minimal. So that's pretty much what the rule of thumb is. That's right. Right? So now, Anthony, what are the symptoms of dry fascia? Oh, great question again. Mm -hmm. um, let's go down the list, shall we? <laughs> okay. I will start with the foot, and I'll just gingerly go up the body. Uh, some of the symptoms include inflammation, knots, or we call them adhesions. So if you're like rubbing your back against the wall, you're trying to rub that knot out. Uh, immobility or stiffness decreased range of motion. So instead of being able to raise your arm up, 
you kind of compensate with other muscles that aren't moving as much. You can have various types of pain, whether it's a dull, achy pain in the appendages, it can be a sharp pain in a certain spot, or it can be chronic pain, which is from the moment you wake up to, to, to right before you go to sleep. You're constantly in pain of some sort or some type. Other issues related with stiff fascia are poor posture. So a lot of the times people say, oh, I'm getting old. I have this my I'm old because my posture, my posture is bad. Well, guess what? If you address your fascia, this fascial organ system will help you stay upright. It will help you with your imbalances. If it's dry, it pulls you out of position. Um, if you've had prior surgeries, whether it's for a knee replacement, meniscus cleanup, frozen shoulder, plantar fasciitis surgery, Achilles tendonitis surgery, carpal tunnel surgery, it also helps with managing the scar tissue that was introduced by way of the surgery. So surgery can be great if I need it, but sometimes it's not needed, or sometimes it, the, the, the end results aren't as good as we would like. A uh, little more symptoms of this stiff fascia, your body awareness and the ability to maintain yourself, keep from falling down. So out here in Honolulu, we have a lot of seniors, and I see a lot of them. I see them fall on the street. Right. These people who have been taking our class for a year, two years, they're like, Anthony, I almost fell in a pothole, but I righted myself this time. Mm -hmm. Last year this time, I slipped, I broke my foot. So thank you for what you're doing. And uh, that's why we're here. We're trying to help more people understand mm -hmm. there's an option for you to take charge of your life. And instead of saying, well, I'm getting old, that's what happens. No, I disagree. Mm -hmm. You can rehydrate your fascia. You can improve your posture. You can improve your digestion. You can improve your range of motion. You can stop hurting and stop taking pills, but you gotta do a little work. Right, Wendy? That's right. And you know, so it's, age is just a number. But how do we approach that age matters. And so by taking care of your body and understanding how it, the chemical makeup or even the fascia makeup and understanding that, like you just said, yes, I see a lot of people fall, simply falling out of their bed, not even falling over a hump or a curb, but just falling out of bed. And you know the whole saying, as we get older, the age number, you know, we fall, we get hurt. Do you think that leads up to a lot of different chronic diseases and issues of the elder? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm 80, and let's say I used to walk my dog around the block every day, because that's what happens. And then one day I fall, I land on my pelvis, I shatter my pelvis, because maybe I had osteoporosis because I'm 80 years old. Next thing you know, you're in a convalescent home. And because they are not moving as much as they used to, things start to settle. Old inflammatory liquids start to pool in the body. And one of the first things that happens after a, a convalescent home visit is pneumonia. Wow. Because it doesn't kick, they don't move around. That old water pools at the base of the lung. They're breathing in this air that's probably recirculated because of the home. And guess what? When that little piece of bacteria falls in that dirty water in the bottom of your lung cavity, it's like giving a toddler a big bag of caramel. They go crazy, and that pneumonia starts to develop, to develop in the lung and flourish. Now, uh, in November 2015, I went to the first joint conference on fascia, oncology, and acupuncture. And one of the results of some of the studies they did, they were able to prevent the formation of pneumonia in the lung by pushing and removing the old cellular waste through the body so it can be filtered, leaving more opportunity for repair versus more opportunity for these, these, these hijackers of our immune system, if you will. They get in and they take over. Well, if you move your body regularly, and I mean like every day, then your body will be less susceptible to body infections and it'll be more prepared to heal you when, you, when you're done with your walk. You'll go gardening and go, hey, I garden for three hours, I'm not even tired. These are the stories that we get. Wow. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 it's, it's, and we don't even know that this thing exists in our body. And so that's why it's so important that people learn and want to learn more about how we can maintain and take our health back. Right now, we're going to take a 60 second break and uh, we're going to come right back with Anthony Crisco and uh, more, more knowledge and education that we can absorb so that we can age more gracefully and even for the young, that they can live a healthier, more abundant, fulfilled life as they Get older in life. So we'll return in 60 seconds. We'll be right back. Aloha. Hello, our 
everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Aloha and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii and we're live here at the studio in at the Pioneer Plaza. We have Anthony Crisco here and he's just simply telling us about fascia. So what is fascia? I mean like heck I didn't know until he took the time to explain and then I actually went to one of your classes yeah. and I learned more about that about fascia and I was so intrigued that I wanted you to come on board and share with the people of Hawaii what is fascia and how important is it for our day-to-day -day well-being and he went through a lot of the very simple simple information but yet very intense so we want to just um, continue on at this point and you know Anthony there are so many scientists and doctors um, of the modern day fascia movement can you just share with us a little bit about what you've experienced with them oh absolutely I've had the uh, the opportunity to meet these people firsthand at the first joint conference of fashion oncology and acupuncture and uh, Tom Myers is the gentleman uh, in the white shirt with me in the green shirt. He was here in Hawaii and I had the opportunity to spend 40 hours with Tom Myers. He's a structural integrationist. He is he's the man when it comes to massage. He, he wrote the book Anatomy Trains. I highly recommend it. And what he did was uh, in dissecting these uh, various bodies, instead of cutting the muscles off of each attachment, he would find where the muscle was attached to the bone, he would turn the scalpel to the blunt edge, and he would just go underneath the connective piece and then go into the next muscle. And what wow. it turned out is he was able to maintain continuity through many, many structures. For example, the top of my, f of my head right here, this is your frontalis muscle, it goes all the way back, down your spine, becomes your erector muscles, crosses over a little uh, ligament across your hip, sacrotuberous ligament, becomes your hamstrings, becomes your calves, becomes your Achilles, becomes your plantar fascia. Those are all one structure connected by fascial structures, thus the term anatomy trains. Wow. Okay, Dr. James Oshman in the upper right corner there, he wrote the book, Energy Medicine, The Scientific Basis. Now, uh, I got a chance to meet him at Harvard Medical School, and he's a lot older in this image. Uh, when I met him, I told him, I said, thank you for your work. I use your, your studies and your information in teaching my professional workshops around the world. And he's like, well, thank you. And he wrote to me, he signed his new book to me. He goes, Anthony, thank you for your work in fascia. And I couldn't believe it. This pioneer of fascia work oh. is signing his book to me, thanking me for my work. I, I was like Elvis in, in Graceland, <laughs> if you know what I mean. What an honor. Okay. What an the honor. other people there, Helen Longman, Dr. Longman, she is the uh, director at the Osher Center of um, Medicine for Women and Children in, I think it's in Boston also. She's the one, there's a new study she just put out, it's on my Facebook. Uh, they were able to demonstrate the shrinkage of tumors by 52% with just stretching alone. Now, we don't have time to cover all the details of that study. <laughs> However, it is on our Facebook. You can, we'll talk about that later. Look it up. This information is out there. You just got to arm yourself with knowledge and be aware of what science is showing us today. Right, exactly. And so thank you to Think Tech Hawaii right. for allowing us to be here live and sharing all this information. And mm -hmm. finally, the two gentlemen on the bottom, that's uh, Thomas Findlay and Dr. Robert Schleip. Robert Schleip was a rolfer or a structural integrationist. And he decided, you know, I know these people that I work on are getting better. I want to know how. So he got himself a PhD in molecular biology. Wow. And ever since then, he's been studying the fascia, not just on the global scale, but at the microscopic, even the atomic level, where 
there's particles in your body that are living in your fascia who tell other cells to do other things to fix the body. Okay, uh, we can't even get into it, it's too much, <laughs> yeah. but check out our YouTube channel too. But uh, I'm leaving for Germany to be with Robert Schleif again. Mm -hmm. uh, I am one of 26 people that's going to be on the first ever Fascial Plast Nation project in history. Uh, what is that, you might wonder? Well, who's ever seen the bodies exhibit where they put all these bodies in different contortions and the, there's either the blood vessels or the nerves or the muscles? Well. No one in history has, has been able to dissect the fascial organ system out of a body. And I am one, again, of 26 people on the expert dissection team who has the incredible opportunity to remove the fascia from a body, at which point they take the water out and replace that water with a plastic polymer. Then you'll really see, it's like if I took all the orange out of the orange, it'll be like that. Wow. Yes. Wow. I leave Friday. Can't <clears throat> wait. This is so exciting, Anthony. It's because you're teaching us to maintain our body by simply being aware of the fascia. And then how do we maintain it? And that's what you're doing. So we can mm, probably uh, avoid surgery where it's not necessary that we can uh, go and just take care of us day to day. And I take care of it every day. So that means no hospitalization for Wendy, that's and right. that's my goal. And you know, you're talking about Harvard and all these scientists and all that, but I see you brought some toys here. So yeah. what the heck is that? <laughs> oh, this little thing here, this is called a tensegrity model. <laughs> so I want you to think integrity and tension. So the <laughs> integrity of the tension throughout this structure, as you can see, this resembles a pelvis. And I got this at Tom Meyer's workshop when he was out here last time. Something so simple, dowels and elastic string, but it demonstrates I have muscles in the front of my leg, muscles in the back of my leg. Those muscles apply their tension to the pelvis. If I sit a lot and my quads are tight, it pulls my pelvis forward, which in turn pulls my spine out of whack. Do you understand how I that picture it. works? Yeah. The other thing is, what if I have imbalances left to right? My left side is tighter, so these muscles are pulling my pelvis down. Next thing you know, someone's telling me that my right leg is shorter than the left mm. leg. Well, it's not shorter. The muscles that attach those bones and hold them steady in those joints are tighter, thus pulling the joint deeper into the socket. And that's what leads to the inflammation, the friction, the joint problems. And this little diagram, this little 3D model, shows you how that works. Mm. And it's all about simplicity. If I can educate you to the simplest form of understanding, what are the chances you'll get that down? That's right. I mean, I can understand that. And so, you know, wherever I go, Anthony, wherever I go, the mall, you know, the beach, when I see these people ailing and like just doing this when they stand up or limping, I'm always thinking, they got to see Anthony, they got to work on their fascia. They, I mean, immediately, because I know, I know what you're going to say, what the cause of the problem is, and it's just unbalanced or just tension right. that you could probably help them roll out and fix. You can manage, mitigate, and ameliorate the aches and pains that have been plaguing you for your whole life. No joke. So as a personal trainer for what, 20 years? 24 years. <laughs> With a focus on post rehabilitation, you've developed a simple program that even I can do that addresses the tight fascia and the fascial restrictions. What is the program that you've developed? All right, well, this methodology that we actually own the trademark for is called the fascination method. Why? Because fascia is fascinating, that's why. <laughs> And what does it entail? It is a total body self-massage program using a roller. We're not using a foam roller, though. Uh, we have a hashtag. Hashtag, it's not a foam roller. <laughs> uh, this roller was designed using my 25 years, 24 years of post-rehab experience working with hip replacements, knee replacements, broken necks, broken backs, amputations, working with the troops. I've seen a lot in, a, in my two and a half decades in personal training and post rehabilitation. What we did, instead of using foam rollers, I decided, you know what, these other rollers are too big. You ever try having a 75 year old person sit on something six inches high and say, balance on that? Doesn't work too well. Our fascinated roller is just three inches in diameter, it's about 20 inches long. There's no foam around it. 
The reason we don't use foam is the restrictions, the knots in our body are typically harder than the foam rollers that people have been using. And again, we've been in this business a long time. As soon as someone tries a fascinator, they're like, whoa, this is completely different. I need the other roller, I don't even feel anything. I put my roller in the garbage now. I need another one. I let my friend borrow it. They took it. Or they can use it for an umbrella stand or something else. That's right. right? They can use it. It's not for your body it's anymore. It's not. It's not. So can you elaborate on neurovascular bundles? Sure. Boy, that's, so, a, boy. that's a big, long word, right? <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> neurovascular bundle. Why don't we pull up the slide real quick, and uh, we have a nice little illustration for that. <laughs> so I want you to think of the words first. Neuro, nerve, vascular, arteries, veins, lymphatic vessels. Bundle, they're all bundled together. So if I have all these wires and arteries and veins traveling through my body, there's various places within the body that they penetrate sheets of fascia. Mm -hmm. And these perforations, these holes in our fascia, is where these neurovascular bundles get pinched. Now, with that said, in the image, you see there's the hole and there's the structures going through the hole. Imagine that hole now was squeezing the artery, vein, nerve, and lymphatic vessel with up to 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. Wow. That is the tensile pressure that has been measured at the cellular membrane level when you have fascia that has been unattended. And when that fascia squeezes my arteries, my veins, my nerves, my lymphatic vessels, I can get things like neuropathy, numbness and tingling. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the actual definition of neuropathy is numbness and tingling of an unknown nature. Mm -hmm. So anything that ends with apathy means idiopathic, means, well, you have numbness and we don't know why, have some pills. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've been working with many, many, many thousands of people with the same issues and it always ends the same. We roll out the structure in question, they begin to feel tingling, and they can close their hand, they can make a full fist. That's just the way it works, and it doesn't need to be complicated, and that's what the fascination method is. We've broken all the hard stuff down, so if you follow instructions, you'll be successful. So Anthony, you know, I mean, I found you by chance, and I myself, I just want to give a personal testimony really quickly. So I do a lot of trade shows, so I'm standing up for 10, 12 hours a day, and you know, um, then the next day I have to go back into the trade show and do it again. By the first day, my body, my legs are so tight and they, <laughs> they hurt, and I just dealt with it. And then, yes, like you said, I would have to take some aspirin or something to take down the pain. But since I've learned how to roll out my fascia and my body, all I do is I come home on the first night and I roll out my legs. In the morning, I'm fine. Then I work another 12 hours standing up on my legs, and I roll it out again, and I'm fine. And then the third day, which is Sunday, one more time. So no more medication, no more painkillers. And you know what? I wish that so many people would just understand the simplicity of all that you have to share with them. So at this time, I would just hope that they were tuned in and that they could hear more about what we're doing. So at this time, um, I know that we're, we're, we had so much to say, and I know we we're going to come back again. So Maybe, can you let the people out there know how can they get in touch with you? Absolutely. Um, you can visit us at our website, thefashionator.com. Make sure you spell it right now, fascia, F-A-S-C-I-A. If you put in fascinator.com, it's going to be those little feathery hats from the Roaring Twenties, and I don't do those very well. <laughs> very good. So we're so excited that you came and you joined us here today at Think Tech Hawaii, and we're just so I mean, honored that you were here. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with us as you say goodbye to your audience or our audience here? I, I have one thing to say to you. Your fascia needs you. You should need your fascia. <laughs> Come see us. We have classes all over the island. When you go to the website, look under Schedule of Classes, and you'll see everything you need to know. So again, your fascia, let it be your best friend, or it's going to be your worst enemy. And I want it to be my friend, because it is the largest organ in our body. So we better buddy up with them. As we approach the uh, years ahead, we need to make sure that we're taking and addressing all of that that makes us better. So until next next week, we're going to see you again live here at Think Tech Hawaii. So mahalo to you, Anthony, Crisco, for being here Thank representing Asia. Thank you. Aloha, everyone.